Hi guys, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Webdo. So in this video, we will learn about the another new concept in Angular 18 that is signals. So what is this signals? So now let's try to understand the signals. Signals in Angular are a way to manage state and react to data, flow, data flows similar to how observables or behavior subject are used in RxJS. So that means here signals means it is the way to manage the state and react to data flows it seems. So similarly how observables and behavior subject we have used in RxJS in the same way signals are also useful to manage the state and the reactive data. Okay. So we understood about this uh, signal definition. However, signals are more lightweight and built directly into Angular's reactive system. So then if you have already the observables or behavior subject, then what is the use of these signals? Then you may be having a doubt. So here I am giving you an explanation for that one that however, signals are more lightweight and built directly into Angular reactive system. So that means these are directly built in the Angular reactive system, whereas the RxJS means we need to install a separate package library on the top of the Angular. So now let's try to understand the detail breakdown with exam explanation and examples. So first of all, what is a signal? Okay. What are signals? So let's try to understand what are signals. So let me paste here the data. So what are signals? A signal is essentially a wrapper around a value that notifies consumers that means consumers means functions, components or services. So whatever it may be, whenever the value changes. So that means signal means it is telling that it is a, you, a value or a value will be there. It will, the signal will act as a wrapper to that value. And whenever that value changes, it, the signal will notify to the function, component, services, whoever is using that value. That, that is the signal. This allows for a reactive data flow. So that means whenever the value changes, if it is notifying means, then it is nothing but reactive data flow where changes in the signals value can trigger updates elsewhere in the application. So that is the thing. So let's try understand the char characteristics of a signal. So what are the char characteristics of a signal? So characteristics of a signal, I will try to go. Yeah. So now what type of value that the signal will hold? They can hold any type of value like primitives like number of strings or more complex structures like objects or arrays. Signals expose a getter function for reading their current value. So that means signal will have a getter function in order to read the current value. Signals notify Angular when their value is used, allowing Angular to track dependencies automatically. This is useful for creating reactive application. This is one. These are the three things. So now you need to understand another one is types of signals. How many types of signals are there? So there we also have a types of signals. There are two primary types of signals in Angular. The first one is writable signals, which we will try to learn it now. Writable signals. These can be updated by the developer, meaning you can both read and modify their values. So that means, so that means we can update it. And also you can both read and write the modify the values. And next one is the read only signals, which we will try to learn it afterwards. These only allow reading the value, but you cannot modify it directly. That is one thing. So now example of a writable signal. So now let's try to learn about the writable signal. What is the example of this one? So now <coughs> creating a writable signal. So how can we create a writable signal? So you can create a writable signal by calling the signal function with an initial value. So how it will look like? So let's try to show you our example. So here constant count is equal to signal of zero. So we are creating a signal with initial value of zero and we are consoling dot block count count and we need to we need to use the brackets like this. So here the count function is a getter function. So here you need to understand that the count function is a getter function for the signal value by calling count like that you will access its current value. So now updating the current signal. So updating the current signal. So how you can update a uh, writing say writable signal. So you can change the value of a writable signal using two main approaches. One is dot set and also dot update. So using dot set, the dot set method allows you to directly set a new value for the signal. So how can I set the value? So here I will try to show you the example count of set three. So it will update the signal value to three. So whenever you try to print the count value with a getter function, then it will print the three. Why? Because we have updated the value with a three. So now in this case, so what you, what I want to tell you is in this case, the count signals value is changed to three 
and any consumers here consumer means the component services or functions anything of the signal will be notified of this update that is one thing the second one which you need to understand is the using dot update so here using dot update the dot update method is useful for situations where you want to modify the current value based on its previous value so i will try to uh, show you this one so constant dot update of value value plus 1 increments the value by 1 console dot log of count so here i want to explain you the clear example for this one so here the update method receives the current value as an argument here value in this case and it returns a new value that is then set to the signal this is great for more complex updates so i want to i want to explain you uh, with a simple example by creating the simple counter component we'll try to do it so let me open the project here and i will create a component counter component let us create it and we'll try to create a simple counter increment and decrement thing using this counter component so that we can able to see the output for this one so we have created a counter component let's open this counter component counter.component.ts file and counter.component.html file so like this and here also app.component.html file so here i will try to update it with an app iphone sorry app iphone counter that's it so now if you try to see here it will get it yeah let's save it and here we need to create a counter okay let's try to create a counter count is equal to signal of zero so we need to imply apply signal of zero so this is the default value which i am trying to do initializing the signal with a value of zero and the next one is so we will have a two methods there is nothing but increment and decrement increment and here i will try to do this dot count dot update and you will get the current value and i will update it and i will update it with like this and we will be having a decrement and we will be having a count value this dot count dot update and the value will be value minus 1 that's it so now this is the signal how we can do this is simple signal and here you can have something like counter example okay so here i can write something like counter and here we need to call it something like count like a method okay and here i will be having do and uh, i can have a button and here i can write the increment and this one will take something like click click is equal to increment that's it and in the same scenario we can have a decrement decrement and here also we can have it like this now if you try to see the output for this one if i update the value it will get update and if i am decreasing the value it is decreasing so that means so here we are using the concept of signals and we are able to achieve the reactivity for this one so this is what i want to tell you so this is all about the signals so let's try it me give me explanation to this one so in the template if you try to see the template the template property so the signals current value is read by calling the count function with getter function this allows angular to track the signals value and automatically update the view whenever the signal changes and we are having the update the signal the button triggers the increment and decrement methods which call the dot update on the count of signal so here on the count signal to modify its value that update method ensures that the value is incremented or decremented and angular will automatically update the displayed count in the ui so that is one thing and what is the benefit of using this signals so let's try to understand the benefit of using signals so now we are able to achieve this one right so we need to understand the benefit of using signals so here the benefit of using signals is three points i want to tell you simple state management signals provide an easy and direct way to manage state in the angular application without having to deal with observables or subscriptions reactive since angular tracks where signals are used any changes to a signal will automatically propagate to components services or any other consumers type safety signals are typed making them predictable and safer to use in typescript heavy applications that is one thing and the key points which you need to remember while using the signals is so let's try to uh, write about the key points also so the first one is signals allow for efficient and automatic updates when our value changes making them ideal for reactive us writable signals give you control to both read and update the state using dot set or update method an angular tracks signal usage meaning that you don't need to manually manage subscriptions unlike when using the rxjs subservables 
so in conclusion so what i want you to tell you is signals in angular provide a streamlined i want to tell you here yeah signals in angular provide a streamlined reactive way to manage and update state they simplify handling state management and eliminate much of the boilerplate code traditionally associated with observables and subscriptions with the ability to track dependencies automatically signals improve the efficiency and responsiveness of the angular application so this is all about the basic introduction to the signals concept and also we have did a simple example writable signal also in the next video we will try to learn about the readable signal also hope you understood about this concept if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you